and I got to within about a half mile of the highway, coming up on a right-hand curve, and I saw some movement off to the left in the trees, and I could see it was somebody with a gun, um, which we've seen a lot of people around here with guns lately, um, sheriff people and, and others checking our camps and our properties and things, just like we saw in the news they were doing up in Big Bear. They finally got down here to this area. We're checking around. So I knew they were around. That's kind of what I thought at first. <clears throat> and then I could tell it was uh, Mr. Dorner. Uh, he came out of the snow at me with his rifle pointed at me. I wasn't going very fast, so I stopped, put my truck in park, put my hands up. And he came up and he said, I don't want to hurt you. Just get out of your truck and start walking and take your dog. And that's what I did. I said, can I take, can I get her leash? And he said, no, just start walking. Was at any moment, did you ever think, hey, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> try and get out of here? No. Why is that? Because he wanted my truck and I was going to give it to him. He's up at the, uh, you know, um, it, it was clear from his demeanor that I wasn't one of his targets. And he just needed a vehicle and I was happy to oblige. So you got out of the truck and tell us exactly what happened after that. So I got out of the truck, got my dog, started walking up the road as he wanted me to. Uh, I got out about maybe 10 seconds later. I heard a, a, a pretty good sized volley of gunfire from where he was at. 10, 20, 25 rounds, something like that. So apparently he got in my truck and turned it around and he was going to be heading down the road that I was just coming up on. Um, so at that point, I kind of bailed off the paved road and into the snow, found myself a, a big tree to hide behind, and I called that local deputy that I'd seen earlier on his cell phone. I've got his number, and um, he answered. He said, uh, what's up, Rick? And I said, Paul, he just took my truck. So mm -hmm. he confirmed the description of my truck and uh, said, okay. And uh, I kept running through the snow up to the highway, and I got up to the highway. I called a friend that works at another camp nearby. He said, drop what you're doing and come get me and basically get me out of here. What was going through your mind? I mean, obviously, when you see this guy with a rifle and then when you're hiding behind this tree, you hear the <clears throat> gunfire, you're out in the open. T tell us what's going through your mind. Well, what's, what scared me was the gunfire. Up to that point, I just figured he was in my truck and, and heading out of here. Um, going through the snow, um, I didn't know if maybe he was heading up and might see my tracks in the snow or something like that and follow me. So I did want to get out of there and that's why I was running up to the highway and I just wanted to get out of there. So after I got picked up, I we were gonna, we went up the highway a little bit um, and there's a road that goes around the back of our camp. We were gonna take that loop and the CHP was already at that point setting up a roadblock. So I just said, pull over here. I just want to sit here and relax where I feel safe. And that's what I did for a little while. Now, almost 24 hours after the incident, you've kind of been able to digest it. You came face to face <clears throat> with, a, with a suspected murderer. Can you talk a little bit about those emotions? Well, you know, it's hard to have emotions about me when there's uh, police officers dying out there because of this guy. Um, and that's, you know, really what the story is all about. You know, this guy needed a vehicle. He stopped me. I wasn't one of his targets, but not too long after I encountered him, he found one of his targets, and now we have another officer to bury. So, you know, luckily, uh, you know, he ended it up uh, the way everybody was hoping, as it as it appears. And, uh, you know, we're burying an officer in Riverside today, and now we're going to have to bury one of our San Bernardino uh, deputies here coming up. And, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, it was my call that um, sent the officers right to where he was at. Um, you know, I know there's some women up in Big Bear that uh, feel they're entitled, and I wouldn't be opposed to splitting it three ways but mm -hmm. uh, you know um, I hopefully they uh, stand by their offer and uh, you know feel and do the right thing